how did, it, how did it all come about? When did you get that phone call? Uh, look, it's, it happened really recent, obviously, um, with my position at the Glenelg Footy Club um, over the last year. The, the football I'm really sorry, guys. Just stop for one sec. I'm just going to let the colour bounce off this. The colour looks terrible. I'll have to get a, we'll start again. There we go. Now I'm happy. All right, go for it, man. We'll go again, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us about how this all happened? Yeah, it's happened reasonably quick. Um, I spoke a couple of times. Um, with Chris and, and Aaron Greaves throughout the year, but just more about my development. And I think um, over the last couple of days, it's sort of come to um, fruition and, yeah, ended up at Port Adelaide today. Was it an easy decision for you? Oh, certainly not. Um, I think obviously playing my footy here and um, having the ability to be able to work with Ken and, and his coaching group during the week and being able to come and um, coach a, a traditional side like Port Adelaide, um, where I played a lot of my footy. Um, growing up and, and grew up in the area so I'm really excited about the opportunity and, and really uh, looking forward to having a really successful season next year. Is it prevents, uh, pre- sorry, does it present some real challenges though coming across here? You've, uh, they've lost some players, certainly you, you end up with you know, half an AFL list here and there and you know, it's, a, it's a bit of a different thing to you know, having a, a regular team at Glenelg. Yeah, it certainly is. I think um, that's the exciting thing as well is that it will set some new challenges for me um, I'm really looking forward to working with the, the Port Adelaide Magpies listed player, but also the AFL players as well. I think the mix that you have in your group, um, although at times is difficult, um, I'm really looking forward to that challenge and, and, as I said, having a really successful year. Matt, there's been a lot of speculation for a while this job could come up. Were you sort of a bit of limbo where you were headed next season? Um, no, certainly not. I've been working really hard at Glenelg to set up their season and, and plan and recruit and, and all that kind of stuff so um, as I said before it's only really come up in the last couple of th- uh, days that the position came available and obviously accepted it today. I mean it's the sort of job you had to take for your development but pre-season at the base starts today is that sort of a hard did that add hardness to the yeah the it certainly did Warren I think um, obviously the timing it's not fantastic from a Glenelg point of view but as you mentioned it was something that I, I had to do it's um, fantastic for my development as I mentioned to be able to work with Ken and the other coaches um, in the Port Adelaide Football Clubs um, yeah something that I've obviously been working to over a number of years now and um, it's always hard to move on from one club into the next but to be able to do that and to come back here to Port Adelaide is something I'm really looking forward to. As former Port players love to be involved in Port Adelaide yeah well, I understand. No, different. no I understand the the tradition that comes with it and the expectation that comes with coaching at Port Adelaide. Um, we're here to win and, and we're here to win at both levels. We're here to win at the AFL and the SANFL and um, yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to getting into that when we start pre-season. You start straight away? Yeah, pretty much. I think um, that's to probably be worked over the next couple of days of when I actually start and, and the finer details of, of the role, um, which I'm sure Chris, Chris will touch on in a minute. But um, yeah, looking forward to getting into it straight away and um, yeah, it's not long to Christmas. Is the aspiration eventually to be working at AFL level, be an AFL senior coach? Um, oh, I'm not sure with senior coach. I think um, you know that's certainly my goal to be able to progress my coaching, and obviously the next progression from where I've been has been from the the Sample Club into the AFL environment. So, um, although a major component of my role is to coach the Sample side and the Port Adelaide Magpies, um, I'll certainly be working closely with the AFL, AFL system as well. And um, yeah, look. I, it's day one into a, a new environment, so I'm not going to put you know, um, limits on where I want to go to with my coaching, but it was the next progression to come from Glenelg over here to, to Port Adelaide, and I'm really looking forward to that. You've spoken with Chad Corns at all about you know, what his vision was and whether you can you know, work together to, to go one step further than this year? Yeah, as I said, um, it's all been pretty fresh, so um, my phone's been pretty hot all day, but um, I haven't spoken to Chad as yet, but I'm sure I will in the next couple of days. It's all about winning a debate. This has got a part twos, development and winning. How do you weigh that up? Um, I think they work hand in hand, Warren. I think um, winning's what I'm here to do. We're here to win. Um, we're here to win SANFL premierships. We're here to win AFL premierships. So um, I don't think that'll change regardless of whether you're here as well to be able to develop guys to play AFL footy. So um, I'm really... I suppose firm on that expectation and talking to, to Ken and Chris they understand that um, we're here to win that support Adelaide way and that's what it'll always be like. Was, was something that Chad Corns wanted to, to do to move away from that the, the Magpies senior role and get into the AFL system more or was it something the club thought might be best for him? Yeah look I mean the club when Chad first came on board had it in mind that, that he'd do the SNFL um, Magpies position for a couple of years and we'd reassess from there 
Um, obviously, we, we were wrapped that we had you know, some pretty good candidates to to potentially take on the Magpies role, which obviously Matt you know is now in the position to um, to do. So, you know, Chad's keen to obviously be a part of the Port Adelaide Football Club. He'll move into a, a development role with our forward group, um, and he'll still have a role in SNFL level with Matt. But um, um, you know, we're 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 wrapped that Matt's here. Were you on Chad? Were you? Did he hurt himself <coughs> for the grand final? Did, from a club's aspect, with the way he handled the game and then the loss. Uh, not, not at all, Warren. I mean, you know, from from my perspective, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to there, but I think from my perspective, um, you know, we were obviously bitterly disappointed with losing um, a grand final, but but that's um, has been reflected in any way in in the decision that we've made. We're obviously keen to get Chad involved. Um, with our with our young developing forwards, we've got a group there that we want Chad to be involved in, and, and we're also you know wrapped to have someone of Matt's quality to be able to to come in and, and lead our SNFL program forward. Where do you get some players from? You've lost these good top up players <coughs> that were in the grand final. Um, where do you look now for your sort of players to play centre? Yeah, I mean, look, we we had still a number of contracted players who didn't play um, throughout the year, so we're obviously keen to, to see them progress as, as much as we are our existing group of, of players who, who represented our club at SNFL Reserves level. Um, you know, we, we've, we, we don't have problems attracting players. Um, this is a Port Adelaide football club. This is the pinnacle of the SNFL competition. Um, you know, obviously we've got an AFL list uh, of players which the rules at SNFL level state we have to play. Um, and the guys who are obviously contracted will um, you know, will be part of, of you know, what we think is going to be another successful group at SNFL level next year. Chris, you said you had some amazing candidates to replace <coughs> um, What was it about Matt that made him the, the choice? What, what was he, why was yeah. he best? Well, I mean, you, look, you, you need to be a special person to, to coach the Port Adelaide Football Club. Um, Matt has a history with, with this place. He's obviously... Um, you know, come through the junior program here. He's then gone away into the AFL with Collingwood. He played in the grand final with Collingwood. Um, you know, he's he's a guy who I think, um, and a, and I'm sure he doesn't take this disrespectfully, but he hasn't. He, he wasn't a player with a with a massive amount of talent. He worked really hard to get what he what he wanted. I think he's done that with his with his uh, coaching as well. Um, you know, certainly you know has a teaching background, so we you know we're attracted to that. Um, but we're also attracted to the work that he's done at. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, at Glenelg, he's he's been you know outstanding the last you know, couple of years. Was was unlucky probably this year to to fall at the final hurdle from a finals perspective. So um, look, we're we as I say we're we're wrapped that Matt um, is now back at Port Adelaide. And have you set him expectations for next year and the years beyond that? Um, look, I'm not sure that someone like me needs to set expectations um, at Port Adelaide. Our, our expectation is to win. Simple as that. Um, yeah, we want to do that at, at SNFL and AFL level. Um, Matt's responsibility is to, is to get our, our program at SNFL level moving forward so that we can do that. Um, we're disappointed with losing the grand final last year, um, but we expect to, to be successful. So that's um, the responsibility of everyone here who, who works and, and lives and breathes Port Adelaide.